If Filmora 13's new AI features are so disappointing and underwhelming, then why am I still using Filmora as my go-to video editing software? Well, let's talk about that and also five reasons why I think Filmora could be the perfect editing solution for you as a video creator. Several weeks ago, I shared a video expressing my disappointment with the new AI features in Filmora 13. I was brutally honest about each feature, pointing out exactly why they didn't live up to my expectations. Firstly, I appreciate the support that I received from many of you who valued my transparency rather than me preaching sunshine and unicorns and cashing in their part of the paycheck. Secondly, in the aftermath of that video, I was frequently asked, If not Filmora, then what video editing software should I use? And surprisingly, my answer was still Filmora. Despite its AI shortcomings, Filmora remains my tool of choice. And I wanna walk you through the top five reasons why I stick with Filmora and why I believe it could be a great choice for any current or aspiring video creator out there, just like you. Now, starting a YouTube channel, you've got lots to learn. Thumbnails, delivery, tonality, script writing, recording, editing, just to name a few. You're gonna open up whatever software you've installed and it's gonna be buttons and menus galore that all do wonderful things. But let me give you a little tip that's really gonna help you. Ignore 90% of that. Focus on chopping up, adding transitions, text, audio, B-roll and images. Now, you could learn this in a matter of minutes with Filmora and then circle back and learn all the advanced stuff later. You see, Filmora can grow with you. From day one as a newborn editing puppy in the editing world to day 1000 where you're all grown up and a fully capable editor. As you grow, so will your Filmora skills. And that's what I love about Filmora. Whether you're a beginner or whether you've been editing for a few years, it kind of caters for everyone so you can grow with it. Now, this gets a little bit controversial, but you used to be able to buy a lifetime license for Filmora. It's what I got, and I paid about, I can't remember, about $70, and I got that forever. So, the problem is, that doesn't help Filmora invest, develop, and like any business, try and make a profit. They changed it to what they call a perpetual plan, and I hate saying that, per -per 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 perpetual. Now it's important to realize that perpetual means that you only get that major version. So when Filmora 14 comes out, you might have to then kind of buy the new license for that as well. Now the good news is, even despite that, compared to other editing software, it's still a very reasonable and low cost solution. It's certainly cheaper than Camtasia, Final Cut Pro and Adobe. So this is one of the big reasons why I promote Filmora. Even if it was free, that isn't everything. You can still get free and crap. You need a balance of that affordability and everything else, which is what we're gonna cover in this video and why point three really needs to be appreciated. Now, a moment ago, I talked about learning the basics, you know, all the chopping bit. But did you know that they also provide lots of pre-made stuff? So templates and ready-to-go effects and add-ons. So it can be as simple as just dragging and dropping templates, photos, videos, audio, text effects, tons of ready-made material to edit your videos faster. And it doesn't stop there. If you've got deeper pockets and maybe you aren't a tight sod like me, you can subscribe to their Creative Assets plan. This is a subscription where you get access to tons more ready-made premium options. But don't feel like you have to. I don't and I manage just fine. Now, even with just simple functions like being able to add something as a favorite, let's say there's a text effect that you want and you're gonna use that as your kind of editing style going forward, save it as a favorite. And over time, once you've built up your own style and your own kind of way that you present your videos, you'll have all these favorites and it really quickens up that editing process. Obviously, you've gotta go through the pain of learning it initially, but once you're kind of 10, 20, 100 videos deep, you're gonna get faster and faster and improve the quality of your videos as well. Now let's address the elephant in the room and if you haven't watched this video, I'd suggest that you do before you rush out to upgrade your Filmora version 12. Now if you've not got Filmora version 12 because you've never bought Filmora before, don't worry about this. All I'm gonna explain is some of the AI features which I think fell short a little bit. And that's only really relevant if you're thinking of doing a major upgrade from one version to another. If you've never used Filmora, I'd still recommend you buy it anyway, regardless of the version. Now, full transparency, I like the guys and girls at Wondershare. I've been lucky enough to feature on their blog and work with them on partner videos before, so I felt a little bit awkward when I created my Filmora 13 AI video. 
It's fair to say I gave them a bit of a hard time for the AI stuff. I just didn't see why they would release some of it when it's unusable and ineffective. It felt like a backward step and could damage their product. However, I also hold out hope that they'll fix these features. They'll iron out the wrinkles and use them as building blocks to a better version of Filmora. Despite the disappointment, I do need to applaud them for trying to innovate and improve. There are apps that are never updated and fall by the wayside. And I like that Wondershare are always trying to add new features that help creators out. I mean, look at this portrait function that cuts a person out of the video without hours of tedious manual work. It does it with a couple of clicks of a button. And if you want to learn how to do that, I've got a tutorial that'll teach you every step. Or two of them. So whilst I came across really negative in that video, I don't actually want to be negative. I like Filmora, I like what they try and do. I just think this one was a little bit poorly timed and I look forward to seeing what kind of cool stuff they create in future that's gonna help me out as a video creator. Now, if you've never researched video editing software, then you probably haven't even heard of Wondershare Filmora. I mean, why would you? Well, Filmora are a major player in the video editing world with a solid reputation. They've got 100 million users over 150 countries, so they're pretty big. As a result, there are tons of educators teaching how to use Filmora, so it's really easy to find tutorials and level up your skills. Now, I'm mainly self-taught using YouTube tutorials and just general curiosity and a willingness to break things. But if you're thinking of starting a channel, then you probably couldn't do much worse than starting maybe a Filmora channel because they also have these partner deals where they'll pay content creators to produce videos that meet their um, standards, I guess, if you like. So you, you can actually earn money through sponsored content as well as the stuff that you will earn through YouTube anyway. I think they've got a good appreciation of the power of creator-driven content and that's why they reach out and are willing to work with people as well. And I like that in a brand. They're not completely standoffish. They realise how important it is that these creators out there are creating content about Filmora. Filmora is affordable. It's simple to learn the basics, but it's also got a ton of advanced features that you can ignore until the time is right. But you can grow into Filmora as well as produce a video from day one. That's why I recommend Filmora and why I also recommend that you watch this next video too because it's really going to help you out.